I had no intention to ever watch this movie. He likes science the sport. You know what he's here for. He's not like you. You don't like that. Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So I am so excited to make this video. One of the most popular comments and video requests has been for me to watch the red pill and react to it. This is the video that converts people out of feminism and talks about the men's rights activist movement, also called MRAs. And of course, the title Red Pill is referring to the movie The Matrix, in which he takes the red pill and realizes he's been manipulated his whole life. Reality, as it had been painted for him, did not exist. So keep watching until the end to find out if I still identify as a feminist. And my final thoughts on the men's rights movement, I can promise that everybody will be shocked and surprised. You guys will not see it coming, my final conclusion about all of this. Everyone I've ever been friends with in my life has called themselves a feminist. Some of my best friends in college, when they met me, they said they didn't like the feminist label and we would just have a few conversations and then they'd be like, oh my gosh, you're right, I am a feminist. I made a video in 2015 talking about why I'm a feminist. It was a very centrist and rational video. Co-presidents of productions so with the same exact job and they have one female and one male working it. And the female who's the co of this guy makes a million dollars less than him a year. I talked about globally issues we're dealing with all over the world. 30% of women in rural Bangladesh reported that their first sexual experience was forced to go through genital cutting, which occurs mainly in Islamic countries. In advertisements, music videos, pornography, women are sexualized way more than men. Our sex appeal is used as a means to an end, and it's very demeaning. It doesn't just take place in China, but in China, 39,000 baby girls weren't taking care care of in their first year of life and died because of that. Millions of girls that aren't alive right now, female babies are aborted because they are female babies and so I just, you could go on and on and on. All the statistics of how women are seen as inferior to men and less valuable than men. At the time, do not identify with the super left SJW, that type of feminism. I'm very centrist in my political and cultural views. But a few weeks ago, I was going on a road trip with my boyfriend and we got tired of listening to music and listening to the news. So finally, we were just listening through TED Talks. And so on my YouTube recommended meeting the enemy. A feminist comes to terms with the men's rights movement. I had no idea this was connected to the Red Pill movie, but it was this woman called Cassie J, who was a filmmaker, and she made so many films empowering women, helping girls get into STEM fields. All of these issues in working towards women's equality, empowering women, empowering young girls. And I'm gonna link the TED Talk up here and below and watch it, discern if you want to go through and watch the Red Pill movie. So for one year, I traveled North America, meeting the leaders and followers of the men's rights movement. So she just thought it'd be interesting to do a documentary interviewing the other side, interviewing MRAs. But as I was listening to this, I was shocked. All the men's rights activists I met support women's rights. But in my head, I would add on to their statement a sexist or anti-woman spin assuming that's what they wanted to say, but didn't. So she said in the editing process, it really affected her and she started seeing the truth in the MRA issues. I was reviewing the 100 hours of footage I had gathered, replaying and transcribing it. I was shocked and I didn't realize until the end of the TED talk that this was the woman who made the documentary, The Red Pill. The immense value in listening to them and trying to see the world through their eyes. Literally, a feminist, an advocate, her career was about helping women. Do I think either movement has all the answers? No. So that night, I watched the Red Pill documentary. She doesn't just interview these extremist MRA advocates. She also interviews dads who have lost custody of their kids because of divorces. She interviews feminists, gender studies professors, sociology professors, women who work for feminist organizations. Does that make sense? It's not like it's an MRA rights video. It's just interviewing all the sides. 
So I would argue that men's rights, all the issues the MREs are talking about are completely different than what feminist issues are. We're dealing with completely different things. It's never a competition. It's just pointing out a few areas in society where people are falling through the cracks. But before this, the craziest thing, as I was listening to the TED talk, for the first time I heard the words men's rights without hearing anti-women's rights for the first time. Literally just hearing the term MRA, I just thought that's so sexist, misogynistic. You don't care about women's rights. You don't care about women's equality. And I'm going to make the argument in this video that because I grew up as a feminist, because I have a feminist ideology, that made it immediate in accepting and understanding MRA issues. I think that feminists easily understand MRA ideology because we're working towards the same thing. Men are almost just as likely as women to go through domestic violence, very equal. And by law, a lot of domestic violence centers do not ever accept men. In some cases, if the mom is coming with her son, the son is not allowed in. In the entire country, there's only one domestic violence center for men. I always saw the issue as women are more likely to be assaulted or to be harmed because they are physically weaker. This is one of those other sexist, socially ingrained things where we think that men are the abusers and females are the victims. Again, this doesn't at all push down the female need for domestic violence centers. We should just probably build more domestic violence centers for everyone. Men were saying that even police officers wouldn't take it seriously if they were being assaulted by a woman. And remember, it's almost the same percentage of men and women. first issue that I was already really aware of is that in divorces, the mom automatically gets the children. There were tons of stats in the video talking about it, interviewing people. Even if the wife is an abusive caretaker, really bad influence on the kids, it is so difficult for the father to get full custody. And of course, men can kind of sue back and try to prove that they're a better caretaker, but it's just extremely expensive paying for attorneys and doing all of that. And so obviously the system needs to change where it's not automatically in favor of women. In the Red Pill movie, there were a lot of really sad, heartbreaking stories of fathers losing their children. And there were even stats where if the woman gets pregnant, she can give the child up to adoption without even bringing the father into the equation and letting him decide to take custody. Something else, the kid is not allowed to choose who they want to live with. In some states, I think once you're 16, you can choose. In a lot of states, DNA tests are not even required. There's actually a law in France recently where you're not allowed to take a DNA test to make sure it's your child. Obviously, most of the time, people paying child support are the genetic father of the child, but there are times where someone is paying child support and it's literally not their kid. that assume that women are better at taking care of children, that has caused this phenomena where it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, for the father to get custody of the kids. I know so many guys who wanna be stay-at-home dads, and my dad was a stay-at-home dad for about five years when he was doing his PhD program, and so I think it's really obvious that it's more about the individual than about the gender when we're dealing with who's a better parent. And so this issue, you could argue, oh, it's against women's rights. If we make it an equal thing, if we make it let's debate who's the better parent, women will lose custody of some of the kids. Good. It's kind of like now that women have entered college, less men will get into Ivy League because they're competing against women to get into Ivy League. And so if you're a feminist and you think, oh, that's against women's equality, it doesn't matter. What about the child's right to be raised in the most healthy, flourishing, flourishing environment.
Another issue that the movie addressed is that there's a much higher suicide rate for men over women. Men are four times more likely to kill themselves. So a lot of people will shoot back at this statistic and say, women are more likely to attempt suicide and fail at killing themselves. It's kind of a way to invalidate how so many more men are dying because of untreated mental illness. The fact that men are more likely to kill themselves with a gun rather than overdosing and they're more likely to die because of their suicide attempt should cause us to be even more extreme and intense in changing the way we do mental health treatment. I've made several suicide prevention videos recently and I have so many videos about mental health on my channel. My experience has been that every single guy best friend I have has had someone close to them who has killed themselves. Two of my guy best friends have been so close to killing themselves. I also have a female friend who has attempted suicide. But the point is, when it comes to deaths by suicide, men are more at risk. My experience in the mental health world is that more women than men are therapists. There are some brain differences between genders. I tend to have a lot of testosterone and my brain is more like a male brain in a lot of areas. I get really frustrated with therapy because it's very much female brain focused and that you just talk about your emotions. Whereas my personality and a majority of men, it's not just talk about your feelings, but kind of an action plan for how to change things. There's research done on the differences between men and women, but I think even more research should be done on how specifically men are affected by mental illness. When we think of depression, we think of someone crying a lot, low self-esteem, not motivated as much, sleeping too much, but we don't typically think of anger and irritability, which is how it affects men. And so there just needs to be more education, more research put into how these things are affecting guys. Something else I've experienced is that a lot of guys are scared to get help, are scared to go to therapy. We have this really toxic mentality where guys should just man it up. We're teaching men that if they're struggling with something, if they have a mental illness, if they need to go to therapy because they've been through some trauma. I forgot to film this part. So one of the most scarring but memorable articles I ever read was when I was 13 or 14 about an Iraq war veteran, all the surviving soldiers from his unit who came back home. One after another, every single veteran committed suicide and he's the only one left now. They talked about how there's not enough funding that goes into mental health treatment at the Veterans Affair Office, but especially they talked about the way therapy was done, dealing with PTSD, seeing violence and death from the war, they were forced to talk it over, remember it in therapy, which again is the female brain type of therapy. And the soldiers said that because of having to talk about it again and again, remember these horrible experiences, that made their depression and PTSD even worse and is the reason why so many of them keep killing themselves. We need to prioritize mental health treatment for war veterans who have served our country by going through the most violent, horrific, scarring situation. A lot of war veterans become homeless and so when we're talking about human rights in regards to men's rights we really need policy changes we need so much more funding in the u.s budget going to war veterans and their mental health treatment if i went to grad school for psychology my thesis would be about how mental health needs to change to better address the concerns and problems that men deal with there's obviously a problem when men don't click and connect with therapists when they're scared to get mental health treatment is that in any way not helping women women who are suicidal? Is it putting less funding into women's mental health treatment? No, it's just understanding that there are differences in brain chemistry and we need to be really careful to equally research both and make sure that men are being helped just as much as women. But I would argue that so many more men are going into psychology becoming therapists because we're not seeing psychology, we're not seeing mental health as just a female field, but allowing any gender to enter into that. Also, for prison sentences, women are given way less prison sentence as compared to men, which I think is a danger to society. If a woman steals, murders, rapes someone, she should be in jail just as long as men are. Again, because I'm more SJW focused and more liberal, I've always understood how systemic racism affects people in the criminal justice system. And so just like how blacks and Hispanics are given longer prison times for the same exact crime, the same thing happens where men are given longer sentences, are more likely to be on death row than women. And so we just to have equality where if a woman is a criminal 
a danger to society, she should be in jail just as long as a man is. And in my videos, I have directly talked about this organization called the Innocence Project, where a majority of men are taken off death row because the attorneys who work for the Innocence Project can prove they didn't even commit the crime. So I'm agreeing with men's rights activists standing up for men's rights by supporting that nonprofit. And it's even the same thing with the way we talk about sexual assault, the way we talk about rape. I don't really know how I feel about changing the discussion in the way we talk about sexual assault. I know at my university when we were talking about it, it wasn't at all tell men not to read. But it was explaining what sexual assault is, defining it, and just encouraging everyone to make sure if you're at a party and some woman looks really drunk, to intervene and help her. It explained what to do if your friend has gone through that. So I know at my university, it wasn't at all teach men not to rape. It was just a thing done in every freshman dorm. But when we're talking about toxic masculinity or rape culture, in the honors dorm at my university, my best guy friend said that the guys in his dorm were laughing throughout the sexual assault talk. Maybe there was a female dorm that was laughing throughout it as well. But I think it is a real issue where probably more men than women do not understand or respect consent. One thing though that I think is really important to talk about in this discussion that I've seen is that it's more acceptable almost for women to not realize they're sexually harassing a guy. So I feel like we talk so much about guys understanding consent because in society the default has been men pursuing women and so in every part of the relationship we think of men as initiating things physically. So I feel like we need to have a discussion where we can tell women that they can't just touch a guy. You might think this isn't a problem but my experience is it is a problem. I remember seeing and hearing people talk about this in one of my dorms there was this girl who was really into a guy and she was just like touching him and he didn't want her to touch him. They were in front of other people so he couldn't really say anything. Another one of my friends from college this girl would always be touching him and like flirting with him not understanding consent. And so I think it's really important to have detailed conversations, understanding that women can sexually harass, sexually assault men. And like I said, we're dealing with completely different issues. Even though I'm using the word sexual harassment, it happens in completely different ways. You know, men will catcall women on the street. A woman who's into a guy in a social situation on a personal basis, maybe making all this body contact that he's uncomfortable with or could sexually assault him. My sister who is a legit SJW feminist goes around and gives talks to girls and boys teaching about physical consent. It's not just to men, it's to men and women, boys and girls. And my feminist sister is the one who made me so intentional in not sexually harassing a guy. So I think in having these conversations, we need to talk about both genders and understand that women can also be violent. Women can also assault. So the argument by the MRAs is that we don't talk enough about women also being abusers and women performing domestic violence. And so again, this is not a competition talking about how women can also sexually harass, women can also be violent. It's not at all saying that women are also not victims. You know what I mean? MRAs are just like, when we're having these conversations, let's talk about both genders. He likes science, that's the other thing that was really interesting was the way TV news channels talk about atrocities. There were so many examples and it was crazy. So like CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, whatever you watch, if ISIS or some terrorist groups attacks a boys school or kills all these boys, that won't be reported as much. But if a girls school is attacked, if girls are killed, if girls are raped, that will be a huge news story. I get a lot of my news from NPR. My family has our entire lives and a lot of people will argue that it's biased but if you read their articles listen to their programs they interview all perspectives i was reading an article the other day of them slamming obama on his health care bills explaining how horrible he was and how the catholic church was right in being so annoyed at everything being so negative towards a democrat president anyways so my experience with npr i also read the new york times and the atlantic is that they report about global issues not just about national issues they have really long articles articles with so much detail. They go really in depth in things happening in so many different countries all around the world. And so I think a lot of times we'll say that media only talking about Europe is only talking about Christians getting attacked, is only talking about girls being attacked. And if you're having that media experience, it's 
because you're listening to these clickbait mainstream news sources. I barely ever watch TV or watch news videos, but when I do, it tends to be shortening stories so much with barely any detail. A lot of people are just impatient to read a really, really long article to listen to an hour long NPR special on what's going on in a specific country. Their point was that we care more when women die than when men die. And you have to watch the movie, but they compared a ton of different media outlets and it was just kind of messed up in what they didn't report. So yeah, it's true that when women or girls are attacked, it becomes more of a media sensationalism. But I personally do not deal with that because I try to read really, really long articles talking about what happened. The final MRA topic I'm gonna to talk about is that education in primary school is not catered to boys. I've been aware of this for a long time just because a lot of guys in my life who are really intelligent, so intellectual, but they said in elementary or middle school, they just really didn't click with the education system at all. And so I personally do not feel like we're going against women's equality in talking about this because when we talk about how there's more men in Congress, more men in STEM fields, more men who are CEOs, that's its own issue and something we need to address but what I'm talking about with men and what the MRA groups are talking about is that currently there's way less men going to college and graduating undergrad than women so again this isn't a competition we're talking about completely different issues in the education system I don't at all like overplaying the gender differences but there are objective biological differences objective hormonal differences between men and women so so like I talked about with how feminist ideology of freeing anyone to do any career they want to, that will help psychology better help men. I would also argue that because of feminist ideology, more guys, more men will become teachers of elementary, middle school, high school. More guys will feel like that's not a negative thing or a lesser thing to teach kindergarten as compared to college or as compared to high school. You know what I mean? It's like when we start saying emotions aren't weak, then guys feel more free to talk about their emotions. So I think feminism is actually slightly helping the issue, but I would argue that because currently there's mostly women who are elementary and middle school teachers, we should do a lot of research into how boys learn better and try to mix up the classroom, maybe have boy specific, girl specific activities, just so that everyone is equally succeeding. So if more women are applying to college, going to college, graduating from college, something is wrong with how we're teaching elementary, middle school, high school that's causing men to not be as successful. And again, I would argue that because I grew up feminist, because I'm more liberal, the same way I think about systemic racism, where people who are black are less likely to go to college, graduate from college. And I believe that's a problem because someone who is black is not intellectually inferior to someone who is white. And so the same thing, because less men are going to college now, and 30 years ago, the fact that more men than women were going to college because of a societal problem. Does this mean that focusing on how boys learn better will make less women go into STEM fields or less women become CEOs? Absolutely not. The conversations we have to help women believe that they can be really good at math and engineering and computer coding, that's completely different from the fact that boys are not learning as well as girls in elementary and middle school and maybe even high school. We're dealing with two different parts of education inequality. So my overall review of the Red Pill video is I still identify as a feminist, but I also identify as a men's rights activist. Yup, I'm an MRA. <laughs> See, no one saw this coming, right? Not only did I not get red pilled, but I'm an MRA now. Sure, there are some MRAs who are super sexist, misogynistic, horrible people. I don't care, but it's an ad hominem argument to attack the person who's making the argument. So yeah, all these really popular MRAs, some of them were interviewed in the movie. I didn't go look at their blogs. I didn't go look at their videos or articles. I don't care. The point is this group of people is coming up with really good arguments with tons of evidence and I agree with them. I am so excited to be a men's rights activist and to be a women's rights activist 
i.e. a feminist. The movie did talk about how there are some pretty big feminist organizations which are lobbying against men. Like they're intentionally setting up a law that only has women's domestic violence centers or they're interfering with legislation and not letting divorce court to automatically go to the woman. Like there's feminist organizations that are instilling certain inequalities and that needs to stop. But I think most people who call themselves feminist are nominal feminists and are more chill like I am. And focusing on men's education, focusing on men's health care, focusing on male victims of domestic violence or sexual assault, focusing on mental health treatment for men, suicide prevention for men, health care for male veterans, helping homeless men. None of that in any way takes away from helping women in similar issues. Also, in church growing up, sometimes we would separate by genders. The men's Bible class, the women's Bible class, men's prayer breakfast, ladies, whatever. You know what I mean? Even at campus ministry retreats when I was in college, we'd always have one day where we separated by genders and talked about different things affecting each gender. Was that pushing women down by uplifting men? Absolutely not. We should uplift both sides. And if we need to do that specifically by focusing on men's rights issues, not only women's rights issues, why is that a problem for people. Go watch the red pill video and comment below. Do you identify as a feminist? Do you identify as an MRA? Do you identify as an egalitarian? I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!